Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Sam and welcome to the Emily Rose Party Designs community where we talk about everything to do with Photoshop. In Photoshop Friday, we have bite-sized 30 minutes or less video tutorials on making party decorations in Photoshop. So let's get started. Alright guys, in this module we're going to be learning about how to do a wild one invitation. So I'm going to be making the size of my invitation to be a 5 by 7 invitation. So, Alright, so I am just in the front screen of your Photoshop and all I'm going to do is click onto the 5 by 7 custom uh, size and we're going to hit create. Everything else stays the same. We're going to have a white background. So let's click create and we're in our front section. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is import all of my clip parts and wallpaper and I have them all sitting in a folder already and waiting for me and all I'm going to do is click onto all of them. So click onto the first one, hit my shift key and click onto the very last one and all I'm going to do is just drag them all in and hit enter 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 this is the way I do it. I mean, of course, there are plenty of other ways of doing it, but I like to do it this way and then pretty much hide, um, hide, hide the clip art that I'm not using at that particular time and then ent um, pop it into place. Okay, first things first, I'm just going to take my wallpaper and I'm just going to hide that. I'm going to move that to the very top like so and hit enter. I'm just going to move you to the side, you to the side, so I can see what I'm working with. This one I'm not going to use, I'm actually going to delete that one. Okay, and I'll pop you at the bottom, and I'm actually going to hide that one for now. And you can be about there. Okay, so here is all our little little goodies that we're going to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is be adding my wallpaper at the top. So it's going to have some almost like confetti coming down and then I'll have a wild, um, wild one. I'll have the name. Um, so Tristan is a wild one. Okay. So let's just see first. I'm not particularly liking the color of this white so I'll see if I can actually delete it um, by doing that all we need to go over here is onto the toolbar and click onto the magic erase tool okay and this little pop-up thing is gonna pop up just hit OK and let's just plonk and there we go so it's deleted that whole white that off-white type of color and it now matches my background which is what exactly what I wanted okay and then I'm just gonna move you slightly bit up actually no slightly bit down but I'm don't wanting it such a straight edge so all I'm going to do is go to the magic erase tool right click that and just hit erase okay and you will see on the top here you've got 15 as your size all we can do is keep that size and start erasing or we can click onto that and let's just make it a little bit bigger and start erasing a few things so I'm just wanting to make it look very scattery, so not so um, polished, if that makes any sense. Uh, so there we go. Let's just make a few more. Okay. All right, I'm happy with that. All right, and then let's just drag. Let's just drag you further a bit down, okay? And you notice that it's obviously hasn't um, did the the erasing of the top over here. So let's just go back and do that and erase. All right, and then hit select. All right, so I'm liking that so far. Now let's start adding in our wording. All right, so all I'm going to do is pop on a new layer, go over here to the type tool or the text tool and I think I'm gonna go with um, let's just go with Arial 
which is just the normal one aerial regulator in the same and I'm actually going to make it quite large let's make it um, 55 hit enter okay um, what did I do sorry aerial all right there we go and let's type in our name and let's bring you down to about there actually let's bring you a little bit further up there we go and you see how you see how that pinky line through has come up onto my onto my screen that's just telling me that is exactly centered all right by doing that all right otherwise the other option is to use the marquee tool like i showed you in the previous video all right so let's keep going i am just going to create a new layer and i'm going to keep it as the same but i'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller let's just make this say 12 is a well it's probably a bit too small let's make that say 20 oopsie highlighted 20 30 okay make it 30 all right and let's bring you about there and then let's add in our wild and, and I might change that to there's a nice font called RC this one here I think it's this one here and I'm gonna make it wild nope that's not the font I'm after okay so I have just changed the font of my um, the letter wild and all I did was go here and I just found the font that I was looking for I couldn't find exactly which one it was so I just had to do it off screen quickly to figure out which one it was so it was just that one and I've made it to about 92 and I've just kept it at the the black for now but I'll show you what I'm gonna do all right so we imported the gold glitter paper and there it is there and all we're gonna do is a clipping mask like I showed you in the previous videos and I'm just going to clip that glitter that, uh, glitter paper to my wild uh, letter. And let's just switch it on first. There it is there. And all I'm going to do is right click and hit clipping mask. And voila. There is our glitter wild name. Okay, we can probably maneuver it slightly to see if there's any, you know, other. Because it's, it's a bit of a all different colors like dark colors and light colors um, throughout the whole wallpaper so I actually quite like that yep I'm happy with that all right and so that is done all right so and then all we need now is at the bottom is the number one okay so I'm just going to click on to here and I'm gonna hit an extra layer over here let's change the font to say I quite like Arial Bold, this one here. All right, and then I'm wanting to make the size to about 100. Let's make it about 100. All right, and let's type in, in big capital letters, 1. All right, and let's hit the Select tool and bring that to about there. And then all I'm going to do is bring that underneath the wild okay so now it's showing underneath underneath um, this layer here okay and then it's pretty much now just adding in all our little extra details all right so the first thing I want to do is you can pretty much take any clip art and really make it stand out or just make just play around with your clip art and see what happens so all I'm going to do is take this one and I'm actually going to hit Control T and first of all I'm going to hit the shift button and drag it down and I'm going to rotate it like it's peeping out from the side and I might make you a tad bit smaller and I might pop you about there let's just bring you further down like so I'm quite happy with that and I'm going to hit enter okay so now he looks like he's just peeping peeping out into the invitation and then I'm going to do the same with this little bear hit so make sure you clicked onto the layer and the layer is selected hit control T let's drag him down 
rotate it and he's going to be peeping out about there let's just turn him slightly bit more yep about there i'm happy with and hit enter okay so now he kind of looks like he's peeping out too all right now i'm going to use this uh this arrow so i've clicked onto my arrow hit ctrl t for transform oopsie the wrong layer let's go back here uh, hit place all right click on to make sure you've obviously clicked onto the right one and i'm just going to drag to make this smaller so if you haven't noticed by now i'm using the exact same techniques for all my invitations my number one key i love to use is obviously ctrl t for tango and that helps me transform it into um, something bigger or smaller so that's like my number one you could say short key short um short key that i like to always use all right and let's hit enter okay now i've got this little thing here which is meant to be like a dried tree and i'm just going to make this into let me think all right i might do a small little one and i'm just going to drag him about say there hit enter just something that's behind and then i'm just going to hit i'm just going to drag that to the post-it note and i'm actually going to duplicate it and let's drag it out and i'm going to make this one standing behind the um the bear uh, let's make him a little bit bigger and let's drag him maybe kind of off the page like so and obviously he's already behind the bear okay and then hit enter now my little bear you can still see that he's not obviously correctly positioned oopsie so let's just position him a little bit more and drag you down there we go that's about right okay now it's starting to look like it's coming together okay now i'm going to be adding in my banner so all i'm going to do is hit Control t and let's just make that a bit smaller and let's pop you about say there and hit it all right so now i am going to add in my little detail that's going to go over here all right so this is a little extra technique that you can that you can learn so all i'm going to do is write down um, my wording let's just make it plain aerial I think the regular one all right and I might just make that say 20 okay and hit over here and join us to celebrate okay so let's bring it to the center so I can show you all right so this little button here is like your it they um, it's called the wrap text tool but you can it's also like your arc arch type of um, effect tool so if you click onto that hit arch, maybe arc effect. okay hit the blend tool and let's just make it slight bit of a arch about there would be about good all right hit enter the other thing i want to do now is to change my clip art to white okay and then i'm just going to hit the select tool and all i'm going to do is drag that into the middle and there you have your arch looking um, join us to celebrate Alrighty, so let's go ahead and start adding in all our details at the bottom so all we need to do is once again just click on to a new layer all right and let's go over here into our tool while we're going to hit the, the type tool okay and i'm going to want to change this to one of my favorite fonts which is uncle grump and my computer has decided to be incredibly slow Uncle Grump, regular. 
and we're going to go with say 60. All right. And let's type in 26. And sorry, let's change the font color to be black. And there we have it there. So let's pop you say about there for now. We will change it all around once we've got all our details in. Okay, now let's add in a new layer and I'm wanting to change this to Arial. Regular. Actually, let's make it Arial, the bold one. Bold, this one here I like to use. Uh, let's change the size to 30. All right, we're going to go to the bottom here and I'm going to type in August. Let's drag you about. Mm, okay, I am also wanting some lines across, um, like as a, as a barrier between each section. So all we're going to do is go over here to our shape tool and we're going to hit right click and we're going to click onto this line tool. Okay, and then you'll go to the top here. This is going to be turned to black. A fill color is going to be nothing. And all we're going to go is we're going to go from here. By hitting the shift B key, it kind of keeps it um, straight. All right, and then we hit release. Okay, and now if you're wanting to make it a little bit bigger, let's just make it slightly bit bigger. Uh, dragging it further out and I am also just wanting to make sure that the let's actually put in a full color and then let's make say the thickness of it just a little bit more thicker because it just there we go it's a bit better all right okay so now let's add in a new layer so that's something new that you can that you can add into invitations too guys all right so let's add in the details So this part I just wanted to be the not the the normal one, which is over here. And let's change that to say twenty. And we're going to start typing Tristan's house. Let's just move you into there. All right, I'm already starting to see I'm not going to have enough space. So let's just drag you over there, you over there, you over here, and let's pop you about there. All right, new layer. And then we'll just enter in. Um, so sorry let's just go back to them so what I would probably do is actually sorry a lot let's just delete that layer is just duplicate that layer all right and hit the shift key and drag that one down and hit the type tool and go over it and let's just start adding in the new details okay and let's just move you to there and let's add in another layer hit the shift key so it kind of stays in the same lines right underneath each other i'm just making up this name because i don't know what to put so let's put anything all right so Okay, and then let's just click on to our shape tool if we can click on to it. Sometimes it's a bit difficult. Or we can just go over here and let's duplicate it and hit the shift key and hit your arrow button on the right and go all the way to where you want it. 
about there. Okay. Now let's add in a and we're going to pop in the time. So let's just add our text and I'm wanting it to be Arial, the bold one again. And I'm wanting the size to be around 30. Okay, and we're going to pop two. And let's duplicate that. Let's just move you to about there and then take you here. And then let's change this one to say PM. Okay, but all I'm actually, actually, what I'm going to do is click Control T to transform it. And I'm actually going to make it a little bit more thicker like that there. Okay, and then drag you down. All right, so as you can see, let's now just make it a little bit more in proportion. Let's drag you about there. You can go in the middle. So uh, let's pop you about there. Actually, we can probably drag these further down. Um, all right, that's starting to look a little bit more better. And I'm just thinking now that these shapes can probably be made just a little bit smaller. And this one too. Now, I don't know why that has decided to be bold so let's just delete that one and make a new layer and hit control and the arrow and bring it all the way to the opposite side to about there okay that looks about right let's add in a new okay now let's add in the RSVP I uh, might just change this to a little bit smaller to say about 15. R by 20th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Alright, let's drag you to the middle about there and now I'm just going to add in a little embellishment or a little fun design at the bottom there okay so this is something that is um, pretty cool to learn so first thing I'm going to do is right click the shape tool and hit the rectangle and I'm just going to go a little bit off the canvas and drag it to the very end and hit release all right I want to fill that with black which is already pre select the black and it's going to have no border all right so that part is done the next thing I'm wanting to do is if we scroll down let's have a look and see if we can find that clip part that we added to it right in the very beginning I think I would have unselected it there it is there okay let me just go here and just all I'm going to do is reduce this. I'm actually not going to hold the shift key down to keep it in proportion. I actually want it a little bit thinner to about there. Okay. And all I'm going to do is drag that out and then drag it out this way too. All right. I can probably make it a slightly bit smaller to about there and then hit enter. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is actually change the color. The color of the squiggle lines all right and to do that we just go over here to our paint bucket tool and we are going to go over here so you've got two ways you can either do a clipping mask and clip it in there or you can just change the foreground color which is already selected okay and then we're just going to hit okay and then try and find it if you need to zoom in just go Control plus and zoom in and then go down and it's a little bit easier and there it is there there it is there and there it is there all right now all we're going to do is control t okay so to transform it so we can find it and let's drag it onto our design all right now because this is at the very bottom of your layers panel of course it's going to be behind 
the rectangle shape. So all we're going to do is click that, so, sorry, hit enter first to place it and then let's drag this layer, well we'll just drag it all the way to the top and there it is there. So let's hit control and the minus sign just to go out again and there it is. Okay, so what I would do then is let's just fix it up a bit because it looks a bit funny. Let's just bring you further down and further up, there we go. And let's bring you, if you can't really get it in, just use your arrow key like that and hit enter and voila. Okay, there it is and let's um, place our little image back, our um, RSVP back. And there you have it. Okay, once you are happy with your design and you want to now save it and send it off to your customer or to um, save it and print it out yourself, what we need to do then is to save it first, <laughs> most important. So let's go over here to File, Save As, and you're going to save it to pretty much wherever it is that you want to save it. So I'm just going to use, this is my folder. Okay, and I would then just go 5 by 7 and then I would first save it as a PDF file. So I would hit save, all right. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to click onto this one here and hit save, all right. So I'm saving it as a PSD, okay. Remember that, a Photoshop file, all right. And then you're saving that. Now, now we can go ahead and flatten the whole design. So you're going to make sure that the top layer is selected. Scroll all the way down and hit the shift key and hit the last one there. All right, the last layer. And you're going to go over to your layers all the way down to the bottom and hit flatten image. Okay, now you can go back into here, hit save as, click over here and hit JPEG all right and then you're going to save it as your JPEG okay I'm not going to do that because I've already done it but that's what you would do all right so once you've done that now we're going to go ahead and open up your Photoshop template that I provided you guys when you are wanting to save your images as a uh, PDF file and send it off to your customers it's the one that has all your um, business details around the side. So let's go ahead and open up that file. Okay, and here is my file. So all we're gonna do is go back over here to our image that has been flattened. We're then gonna click here and drag it into our new template, which is this one here. All right, all we're gonna do then is hit Control T to transform and then you see how the arrows have now turned into a double arrows and we're going to go and rotate it all the way until I get to 90 degrees and if you can't get it spot on you can always go over here and change it to 90 degrees all right and hit enter and let's just drag you further up to about there I'm now going to take that image and I'm going to duplicate it hit the shift key and drag it down all the way down all right, and then even using my arrow keys to go a little bit further down. Now, I like to have just a tiny little gap between each um, invitation. So when the customer goes and cuts it out by hand, it's not a, it's a lot easier for them then just to cut it in the middle. So then it's just one cut as opposed to two cuts. Okay, that's just something simple and, um, and it just helps the customer out. All right, so once you're happy with that, this is pretty much a template that you're going to be saving as a PDF file. Okay, so let's go over here and layer it and that by flattening the image makes the file a lot, a lot more smaller. And then we're going to go over here and we're going to hit save as, um, find where you want to save it. Okay, and we're going to change this now to a PDF file and then hit save. Okay, and then this little screen will pop up. Let's untick that and untick that and hit save as, sorry, save PDF. And it will take a few seconds for it to save it and then it's done. But remember, we want to keep using this template, this Im invitation printing template um, for all of your things. So if you go now ahead and close this, don't forget that you've now layered um, sorry, you've now flattened your whole template. So you're not going to be able to use this one again, all right, unless you go over 
where you have your image your invitation and change that into a um, white box and then you can't see it anymore okay but my recommendation is obviously just to go to the previous history um, that you've just done so it's obviously brought up all of those and all I like to do then is to go back here and go file save as and you see how it automatically brings it up as a PDF change that back to PSD all right and obviously find out where so there's one there and then just hit save and hit yes because you just want to make sure that it, it has saved it okay sorry I actually forgot to mention that we're we just back into our invitation that we were um, working on remember that we saved it as a um, we, we flattened the whole image to drag it into our other folder so that we can save it as a PDF and also save it as a JPEG in here so remember before you close this design to that you go to the previous um, uh, function that we used um, and that it is back to its layer because you don't want to save this or close it and go yep you want to save it as a PSD file but you don't realize that you have obviously saved it as a flattened image because if you save this as a as a Photoshop um, Photoshop template and it's flattened here you can't go back and change it so please remember when you are saving your designs you have unflattened it and that you have all your layers sitting over here okay because when you go ahead and start selling your designs if you want to all you need to do is just click onto that layer and start changing the name and the and the age and everything else but if it's flattened you can't change anything okay so make sure you change it to the way it was go back into file save as save the PSD file like you had it and hit save okay so it's now saved as my original one with all the layers sitting over there